Hi everyone. How are you today? I hope you are always healthy. Welcome back to my channel. Like always, today I'm going to discuss some topic that will make you wonder about the advanced technology of the past. I got this on various telegram channels. Please check the description to know more about the channels. Some might say that I'm being repetitive by discussing this. But that's the whole point. This is proof that a small occult elite of the history to fit their narrative. Anyway, I also have a telegram channel. There, I will share various information that I cannot share here. Don't forget to subscribe to my backup YouTube channel, the link is also in the description box below. So, without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. Iraq. In ancient Arabic mythology, the rock, or ruck, was an enormous bird of prey, reportedly large enough to carry off and eat full-grown elephants. Usually described as a wider tawny-colored bird, its wingspan was reported to be an amazing 48 feet in length, complete with feathers as big as palm leaves. According to Arabic tradition, the creature would only land on the mountain calf, the center of the world. Some interesting findings that are documented. The earliest known discovery of giant's bones was near Ali, Arcadia, Greece, about 560 BC, when a blacksmith uncovered a 10-foot-long coffin containing a huge skeleton. Hailed as the bones of the Spartan hero Orestes, they were reburied in that city with great honor. Some scholars think they were the fossil remains of large animals, discovered and interred in a coffin at a much earlier time. Adrian Major calls Herodotus's account of this event the earliest fossil measurement ever recorded. In 1509, some workers digging ditches near Rouen, France, uncovered a stone tomb that contained the skeleton of a man of enormous size. The skull was large enough to hold a bushel of corn, and the shin bone measured four feet in length. From this, the full height was estimated at 17 feet. On the tomb was a copper plate that identified the body as Chevalier Icon de Valaimont. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you'd learned something. And, don't forget to subscribe, and also, click the notification bell too, so you won't miss any update. And, watch to the end, to avoid misunderstanding. Thank you. Higher brick, brick that can withstand high temperatures, used to line flues, stacks, furnaces, and fireplaces. In general, such bricks have high melting points that range from about 2,800 degrees Celsius for fire clay, to 4,000 degrees Celsius for silicon carbide. This is the basement of Russia's Fort Zverev used alternative to Napam, until it caught fire in the 70s. Temperatures were so hot that bricks melted, creating an artificial cave of red brick stalactites dripping down from above. It's pretty clear that something hot enough happened in more places than one. Melted brick is a real thing, no matter how much they claim it's not. Take a look at this photo. Why would anyone put bricks between the rocks? Because they are survivors, they did not return to rock form, but all the rest of the bricks did return to stone. The question is, just how much was truly lost and hidden, and by what? What is monatomic gold? Due to such, more and more frequent problems, there is a lot of research and talk about raising immunity. A supplement is being sought on all sides that could significantly help raise the general immunity of our organism. One of the immunostimulants is Ormus. Many mysteries and speculations surround it, and the fact is that it existed in ancient times, in Mesopotamia and Egypt, and was named Cleopatra's milk. Ormus is a monatomic element, or monatomic gold. It is an orbitally rearranged monatomic element, increasingly known in the world of alternative and quantum medicine.
1698, Emperor Peter I of Russia instituted a beard tax as part of an effort to bring Russian society in line with Western European models. To enforce the ban on beards, the Tsar empowered police to forcibly and publicly shave those who refused to pay the tax. A person with a pension for keeping his beard had to directly pay the government. In fact, after his monetary deposit was made, the related department would actually provide the man with a tiny copper token from the picture above, which simply stated that the said person has fulfilled his beard tax obligation. Peter was possibly influenced by the fashionable trends in Western Europe that often espoused clean-shaven faces. In fact, the Tsar even brought back a special pair of scissors from Europe, in which he himself cut the beards of the members of nobility towering over them at 6 foot 8 inch. That's how they do marble floors now, no one cuts or adjusts anything. They just made a screed pour grease and polished it. That's it. Well, what fool would spend half his life to cut out of natural marble some statue or floor for the temple, if they can either mold or pour? Hence the perfect joints, impossible forms, and industrial scale of Egyptian and ancient structures and sculptures. Remember also the armatures inside the statues in previous posts. Why only historians attribute a chisel and hammer to these savages is unclear. One day in Dorchester, Massachusetts, a Precambrian rock, more than half a billion years old, was blown up, after which a metal object resembling a bell was discovered. But, in fact, it turned out to be a vase. And this vase was decorated with decorative elements in the form of flowers and vines, inlaid with silver. What have we here? Another multi-million dollar nonsense. There is no other way to call it. What kind of vase was made 500 million years ago? Dinosaurs made it. Scientists like to stretch everything, showing us our long history and, at the same time, their incompetence. But the fact is, in 500 million years, they never learned how to make similar vases, so they wouldn't draw it away from time. The vase is clearly much much less old, but how did it get inside the rock? There are questions, no answers. In Egypt, there is an ordinary city of Zawiyat el Irian, just two pyramids and five tombs. But if the history of Egypt can be traced back thousands of years, this city is unknown who was built, as well as all its megaliths underground level and pyramids, intended for an unknown pharaoh. Stairs leading down from the surface led to the underground part of the city, to a huge granite sarcophagus that was half built into the wall. In the construction of the pyramids, were used granite blocks weighing only 40 tons. In 1960, almost all territory of the ancient city was given for the military base, apparently, it was very convenient place for building. In 1964, all excavations were banned, and the city and its artifacts were inaccessible, even for Egyptian research. What do you think about this video? Please like and share this video if you like it, so that more people are aware of what is happening in this world. Before I end this video, let's say thank you to everyone who took the time and energy to research this, they have done a lot for us all. Please subscribe to watch the next upcoming videos. Thank you for watching the video until the end, I hope this information is useful for all of us. See you in the next video.